Tony Blair from the K Guitar Company. K has been around since 1890. It's over 125 years old. K has made millions of guitars over the years, but in the 1950s and 60s, they had a line of electric guitars and was one of the first companies to make an electric guitar. The guitars in the 50s and 60s were very popular, and there's people that you may have heard of, like Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton, when he first started, was with a group called the Roosters, and you will see one of the guitars that I'll end up pointing out that he used to play. The guitars over the years have become collector's items, especially the guitars from the 50s and 60s, because of their very eclectic sounds. They're very jazzy, very warm, very subtle, very dirty, smoky type of sound that you normally don't find in the typical Strat or Tele or Gibson Les Paul that you see out there. The guitars started becoming collector's items and everybody was asking us in the 80s and 90s if we would ever do a reintroduction. In 2008, we decided to do it right. So in 2008, we did a reissue of all the K vintage instruments that became collector's items. K made about 40 or 50 guitars, of which about 15 to 20 were fetching a very high ticket and very high market price throughout the uh, internet. Uh, some of the instruments, such as our bass, uh, which we have over here, this bass here, is a bass that the reason it was very popular is because it was one of the few basses that sounded like an upright. Kay called it when they first brought them out an electronic, electronic uh, bass guitar uh, because of that particular type of sound. So they wanted to reproduce instead of having to have someone schlep around a large, very clunky uh, upright bass, they created the electric bass. Some of the people you may have heard of or seen that played this bass are people like Sir Paul McCartney. Sir Paul McCartney, if you ever take a look at the video of Ebony and Ivory with Stevie Wonder, you will actually see him playing this bass on that, uh, on that video. It may not be this exact bass, but they only made about 100 pieces. When we did the reissues, we originally had to go out and find these pieces. We had to pay roughly about $6,000 as a collector for the original bass, and this is the original bass. Some of the things that you'll notice is like on the headstock. The headstock used to be called a paddle boat, and the headstock itself was so big and so wide that it was uh, almost top heavy. When we did the reissues of the same bass, we took all the features that made it good. The pickup is a blade pickup that's about this deep, and that particular pickup gave it its really strong sound. But there are certain other things that didn't make it so good, like it did not have an adjustable neck. Well, you can't make a guitar today without an adjustable neck, so we incorporated in the reissues the uh, adjustable neck. We slimmed down the headstock, so the headstock is a little more contemporary and it looks a little bit more traditional and doesn't look so top heavy. We also do other, gu other guitars. Some of the guitars that we've done, the original one, the original one was done by uh, Jimmy Reed. Jimmy Reed, there's a model, was a K-Thin Twin. Uh, last month, Vintage Guitar Magazine did a article just on Jimmy Reed and him playing the K guitar. People, hence, from this point onward, that have played this guitar are people like T-Bone Burnett. T-Bone Burnett, when he won the Grammy Awards four years ago, was actually playing a K-Thin Twin during the Grammy Awards. T-Bone, when he saw the reissues, was impressed with them and he bought a few pieces for himself. Other people that have played the K-Thin Twin are people like Bob Dylan. Okay. People that have played K's over the years and are still currently playing them are people that you may have heard of, like Shel Crow. Holland Wolf, uh, Willie Weeks, who is the bass player for Eric Clapton, uh, people like Sean Hurley, who's the bass player for John Maher, actually has played the reissue basses on television. This year we're introducing a new series for the Barney Kessel. Barney Kessel endorsed K guitars in 1957 and 1958. There were three models that he allowed to put his name on. Those particular models have his signature actually on his signature actually on the instruments. 
Okay. Right here. Three models vary in size. The Pro, which was the smaller of the three, the Artist, which was in between, and the very large Jazz Special, which was a large jazz body guitar. Extremely uh, nice instruments. Uh, playing and the sound is unique. The look, you won't find anything like it. We've had to spend a lot of time recreating all the parts, like the Kleenex box pickups, the Chevron, which sometimes was referred to as the Calvinator, as a takeoff of the 1950s Calvinator refrigerators, uh, the Shark, or the different types of inlays. We did the Shark skins on the uh, Jazz 2. On this one, we have a block inlay. We currently are offering four models. The Thin Twin, which if I can walk you down here. Thin Twin, which comes in a blonde, a red sunburst, and a black. The Jazz Special. As I said, the Thin Twin, T-Bone Burnett's played that. Jimmy Reed, which I've already shown you a picture of. The uh, Jazz Special guitar, or Jazz 2 guitar, I'm sorry. The Jazz 2 guitar comes in a blonde, and it's a flared maple top. It comes in a honey sunburst with a flared maple top, and it also comes in black. They're equipped with a Bixby-styled hand vibrato. The retail price the retail price starts off around $1,000 and goes up to about $1,400. Kay also is very, very well known for their basses. The Electronic Pro Bass, which was one of the first basses introduced, was a single pickup, single cutaway Pro Bass. Show Crow, if you see uh, ever, ever see a video of uh, Ode to Billy Joel, you will see her actually playing this bass in the video. It comes in honey sunburst, it comes in black, and it also comes in a blonde finish. The Jazz Special Bass, which we started off with, is the black bass that's on the rack. and also comes in a blonde finish. Something very interesting, the luthier that handles the product, his name is Roger Fritz. We also make this, these instruments in the United States as well as making them offshore. Roger is the luthier in charge, and if you'll notice on the truss rod cover, He's, he's so proud of doing it, he will put his name on the truss rod cover itself. The guitars are made with a case. The cases are available. They follow the same mood. They have the same type of antique finish, leather head handle, bronze, bronzed uh, hardware, little uh, K Calvinator she uh, Chevron on the top. So that's it. At this show, we're introducing the Barney Kessel issues, and they're available in the United States at some of the best retailers out. Sam Ash, a musician's friend, uh, George Gruen in, in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Elderly in Michigan, Rudy's in New York. So the creme de la creme, True Tone in Santa Monica, all carry this. The instruments have such an eclectic look that the television program Nashville the prop master asked us to send all six models over so they can actually use them for the nostalgia in the show.